In educational and community theater, young actors are often asked to play older characters. So that's why it's really important for you to learn the techniques of both middle age and old age characters. So today we're going to be working on old age, which is the years beyond 60. And I'm going to make Mary up today uh, to be about 75 years old. And we're working with old age, and in old age, um, several things happen to the face. The first thing is that all of the skin starts to sag a little bit on the skeleton. The eyes sink in. You get lots of lines around the eye particularly, and also the mouth. And the texture changes from this beautiful, smooth skin that you have as a youngster to a more leathered look. So we're going to work today through the process of old age and I'm going to demo as I go and talk you through it. So the first thing we're going to do is work on the eyes. And I'm using, Mary has already got her foundation on and her highlights and shadows. And for this particular one, I haven't done the shadow underneath the cheekbone as I demonstrated in the highlight and shadow section. But I'll show you why in a couple of minutes. So first we're going to be using um, the character shadow and I'm going to be working in her eye area. Remember if you're working on an actor to ask them if they have contacts. And so why don't you close your eye, Mary, and I'm going to work in right in this area to sink the eye in. And I'm going to shadow in a diagonal here on the eyelid. So everything below the line is going to be shadowed. And remember that you can use your hand as a palette. And then everything above that area is going to be highlighted. And in this case for old age, we're using white or the lightest extra light you have. Um, one of the things about highlights and shadows at, at old age is that they become much more contrasted. And we're going to use just a little bit of different colors. So instead of the extra light that we used before, I'm going to use white. And we're going to use some character shadow and we're going to use a new color called Misty Violet. So what I've done here causes the upper eyelid to fall down or the illusion of it falling down on the eye. And if you turn this way, I'm going to do the other side. So again, if you just draw the line in sort of a diagonal and work in the interior area, again, uh, some of you will like to use your fingers, some of you will use a brush. It doesn't really matter what you do so long as it works and the technique is there. And let me just demonstrate uh, a different color, a little bit of a different color. So if you're working on a younger old age, you might use the extra light instead of the white white. And I'll show you what that looks like. Just a second here. I notice that my brushes aren't all that clean today. And one of the things that you should always do, which I neglected to do today, is check your brushes. Okay. And uh, you clean your brushes by putting a little bit of liquid soap in the palm of your hand and then you swoosh the brush around in the soap until it's clean and then wash it out with warm water. I'm also going to be wiping on the towel that I have up here which makes it really easy for me to clean what I need to. Okay, now we're going to work on bags and of course in old age, as I said, we have a tendency to have the eye go in the socket or sink in the socket. And so we do have a little bit of area. Turn this way just a little bit so the camera can see here what we're doing. 
So we're sinking this eye in, and then we're going to highlight this area above it to create a bag. Again, using the white or the extra light. This is very similar to what I did on the middle age makeup. One of the things, of course, is that we start all this aging in middle age and it just continues. It gets deeper and maybe has a little bit more lines and texture. So now look up. Okay, now we're going to add another little bit of line in here. I'm really using what Mary has to start with. I'm sorry to tell you that you are going to have some bags in a few more years. And then next I'm going to add some crow's feet. And I'm going to take some of the natural areas that she seems to have here. And remember that you're using this brush perpendicular to the skin so it's the absolute thinnest line. I have my students practice on the makeup, makeup counter or on the side of their hand to draw the absolute thinnest line possible. And these lines must also uh, have a white component. I'm going to still do the side things. Um, so each one of them, and sometimes people ask, well, what side of the brown line should I put the white line? And the answer is, it. what you need to do is put that line wherever the light is going to make it puff up. And remember that in the theater, the lights are coming from above. So being sure that it looks like the, um, the area, can you squint your eyes just a little bit? There you go, okay. Mary is so young, she doesn't have too many lines to work with here. But let's, let's work on the outside, of the other side here. And I'll show you again. Remember also, doesn't have to match because nature has not made our eye area match. Look up. And the Course in Book has a lot of really wonderful um, examples of eye bags. And that's a really good place to learn the technique of eye bagging, which does take some practice. Now I'm going to come in with those crow's feet again. Now some people will have a lot of lines. You don't necessarily want to do every single one of them because from far away they're going to blur. So you want to pick three, maybe four lines and that's it. And then remember that every time you do a, a shadow line, you do a little bit of highlight as well. And as I showed you in the Middle Ages, we're not feathering this line. We're just laying it right beside and as thin. The other thing we want to do for Mary, and you can do this either with a cake liner or a pencil, is give her just a little bit of color around the eye. So would you close your eye, please? And we're going to just draw a little bit of line on both sides, right above the lashes, and look up. And on the bottom, from about halfway toward the outside. And what this does is help make the eyes pop. And for an actor, the eyes are really the most important feature. So you really want to make them uh, dynamic, even on an old person. Okay, now the last thing having to do with eyes is um, that old age people sometimes get a redness around their eyes and it's called the table of the eye and so I'm going to have you look up 
and I'm going to just peel over here this area right above and put just a little bit of red there and turn to this side Okay, we've got the eyes pretty well done. I am going to put a little bit of color on her eyebrows and eyelashes before we get too far along here. And in the Ben Nye kit, um, there is some white hair color and you can use that. In the theater, I often use shoe white because it comes off so easily and it's also really inexpensive. So I take shoe white and I just um, push it down onto the lid of a Tupperware and get some uh, liquid going. And then I use a toothbrush. And first of all, on eyelash, uh, sorry, on eyebrows, when um, an old person um, gets older, the eyelashes tend to get a little wiry and not quite as um, beautiful as Mary's are. And so I have a tendency to suggest to comb backwards on them, which makes it look a little bit more natural for old age. So I think you can do that. And of course it is possible that you have an old age lady who doesn't look all that bad and <laughs> might even wear makeup and so she might have nicely groomed eyebrows alrighty and then we're gonna look straight up and just as if you're applying mascara we can put a little bit of this on the eyelashes let's go to the other side okay all right, now we're going to continue here with the nose. And I'm going to choose this time to make Mary's nose a little skinny. So I'm going to put even more shadow on the side of the nose. You turn this way. And up a little higher. And then I'm going to accent the center and over the end to make it be long and skinny. Look this way. And I'm gonna carry that line way up between her eyes. Okay, now we're gonna go down um, to the nasal labials. Remember the nasal labials are your smile line. So Mary, give me a big smile. Okay, good. And you're going to take your brush with a little bit of brown of the character shadow and you're going to draw what's going on there and now let's go to the other side okay we're going to make a happy little old lady here it's a good thing okay now you don't have to smile anymore all right now remember that we're going to feather this out from the line toward the cheek. We're not going to add any more product. We're just feathering. And we just turn to this side. And when you feather, you don't want to feather so that um, all the lines are the same length as you feather can also just give it a little bit of pat to meld it together. And now we're going to go to white. And again, with a perpendicular brush, right next to the line you just created, we're going to do another line, and then we're going to feather that one. Okay, 
So the only place that there is crisp, crispness is where those lines touch. And that should be a very crisp line and everything else is feathered. Okay, let's see what we got going here. All right, now we're gonna go down to the mouth. And when we work on the mouth, take these away from you. And I think I'm gonna give just a little bit of color to Mary's lips first. Now you could use lip seven, which I used previously on the middle age model. And um, that's a neutral color, but I think she deserves a little bit of pinky color. So we're gonna just put a little bit here to start with. And generally I put lipstick on with a brush because you can get a really nice line. Okay, now we rub them together. Good. All right, so that's just a little bit of color. Now we're gonna go back to our highlights and shadow colors. And this has to be done really, really carefully. We don't want to use every single line that is around the lip, but we just want to give the illusion again. So there we go, we're gonna make some lines. And again, here and there. And you can go all the way up into the lip. That's why we put the color on first. Okay. And if the character is a smoker, the lines will even be more exaggerated because they suck in a lot with the cigarette and that causes a lot of lines on people who smoke. So it's a good reason not to smoke because you get lots of lines. Okay, don't need to do it again because I've got the places. All right, so now again, we're gonna just have a little bit of highlight. Wherever you do shadow, you also do highlight. Okay, there we go. All right, are we starting to look old here? I'm gonna do one more thing on Mary. This little divot here, we put a little bit of shadow and I'm gonna put just a little bit of highlight to either side of it. Okay, now one of the other things that happens is texture and the skin gets a lot more leathery. So there are a couple of things that we do. First of all, we have a tendency to um, want to add age spots and I have some really great example of age spots on my hand here. Age spots are little color discolorations and they're in a color that's a little bit more cinnamony so I'm using a character, a different uh, shadow color. And I'm just gonna do a few of these, not too many. And I'm gonna do some right up here on the temple. And they're very irregular in their shape. They're sort of like big freckles. One of the things that happens at old age is that your temple area really starts to sink in. So that's why we sort of accentuate that up here. I do see an area that I forgot to put some highlight on. And that's in here. At the brow, right above the brow, to accentuate that bone. 
was not doing such a great job this morning. And those funny nodules up here, as the last area, um, we're going to work on up here, and then I'm going to do some jowls, but we're going to do just a few little lines up here. Can you wrinkle your forehead just a little? Oh, some good. You've been thinking hard. Okay, good. And how about go up? There you go. Now you can see that Mary has the start of some wrinkles here and some lines. So we're going to put some in very, very lightly. And remember, you don't want it to look like an Indian, not painted on. So we're going to do this very lightly and broken up so it's not just lines straight across. And again, a little bit of highlight as well. Some characters might even have some lines right in here. But again, you got to do those with some. Okay, and then pat those down just a little bit. Especially if you as an actor don't, aren't very animated in your forehead. Okay, now we're going to go to the rouge and then I'm going to show you a jowl. So we're going to do the rouge this time with stipple sponge to give a little bit of texture. Just a little bit of color up here. Now some little old ladies you know how you've seen how they put on their makeup sort of in a round circle on the apple of their eye, of their cheek, which you could certainly do as well. Okay. Now, hold those again for me. All right. Jowls. Now, if you could leave it like this um, and get some shadow back in the side um, to sink her cheeks in and create a high cheekbone. But because the skin sags, one of the things that we often do with an old person is do jowls. So jowl is just the continuation of the nasal labial and we do it right at the jawline here. And we take it like that and shape it and then pull it down just a little bit so that the edge of the jaw is shadowed and then you want to highlight the cheek. And this is going to make her look a little plumper and as if the sides of her face are falling. And you would also want to pay some attention to uh, the neck and the hands when you do an old age makeup because of course you don't want young hands up talking while you have old age on your face. Okay, so I think as you can see, this side looks a lot fuller than this side. And I'm gonna just, so that we <laughs> don't make her look very strange, I'm gonna continue and do it on the other side as well. So again, you want to just take it right at the jawline, no higher, and then it would be blended down underneath the jaw. 
and then highlight. And if it looks like the white seems too jarring to you, I don't think it will in a second when we add our misty violet, but if it does, then use the extra light instead. So that's why I didn't do the shadow in this area because we're trying to make it fuller, not um, skinnier. Okay, so now turn around there. Now, the last thing when you're doing um, an old age, you want to come and use this very dark color called Misty Violet. And this is the counterpart part to the white. So it's the darkest dark and the lightest light. And the Misty Violet is going to deepen any areas that you even emphasize more. You want to be really careful because this is very dark. This is a combination of brown and purple, and it's a really quite beautiful color, but be careful with it. And we're just going to put a little bit in here, very lightly, to heighten those places that we've already shadowed. So right at the place where it hits the white. You have to have a really light hand. Okay, and you can even use it here on the mouth if you'd like to deepen those. So as I said before, working on um, neck, um, you have to talk to the costume designer to know what's going on with the costume, but you can put some shadows and highlight the tendons, and of course on the hands, highlight and shadow also which can be done really easily. And if you look in the Richard Corson book, there's a great explanation of both neck and hands, which you definitely would want to do. Now, we want to be sure that you powder, and remember that you can powder throughout the process. Close your eyes. and you're using a translucent powder. So it's not gonna change the color, it just sets the color. And be sure you get in the eye area, all the crevices. And then you can either use a powder brush, you leave it on about 30 seconds or a minute, and then just brush it off. If you don't have one of those wonderful brushes, it's okay. And you can just do this and just be sure there's no powder sitting on the surface. And then sometimes if you feel that you haven't got quite enough rouge, you could come back with a little bit of dry rouge at the end. Remember that if you're using dry rouge, you um, use a brush like this. I don't know that we need a little bit more color, but I'll just demo a little bit. And again, in an upward stroke, you're looking pretty old, Mary. Okay. So now we're going to add a wig so that Mary can really get into her character here. Okay. And 
a little scarf. And all little old ladies have a little shawl. And of course, they have a great hat. So may I present Mary, the little old lady from Pasadena.